Echoes from the past have haunted many in the political landscape. It is for this reason that we actually, in this particular edition of CESA Brigade, look at President William Ruto's decisions, key for that case, this far in his first 100 days in office, and whether they are going to work for his good, or is literally punching above his weight. For many, they have proved to be catastrophic in the fullness of time, but for him, being the smart politician that many consider him to be, will it really work for him this time round? My name is Richard Mwenja, and with me is none other than the only name in public policy analysis and the best political analyst in Kenya and East Africa, as regarded by many of you. Haman Bon Manyora, great to see you, sir. Thank you. Let's talk some of the political decisions Ruto has made this far in his administration and also in preparation for his 2027 bid, should he actually launch one. Let's start from here. The mass exodus. We've seen Atoli uh, go for a handshake uh, just to be in, in good graces. Uh, in uh, Ruto's books and a number of politicians. Look at people from Western Kenya, uh, Governor Natembe and a section of uh, Western Kenya county government leaders. Now this far, from a general perspective, would you say that these are probably opportunists or these are loyal servants and loyal lieutenants who will not ditch him come the next election year? I think the political arena is always full of opportunists. <laughs> so nothing really surprising that anybody would be an opportunist an opportunistic leader, because that's, that is a stalking threat. No, but that's, that's them. That's the currency in there? Yeah, that's the currency. But then, if you Thank compare... You for the good English word. But if you compare it with the 2017 uh, elections, it is after the handshake between Raila and Huru that a number of people now went and be in good books with the president. Yes. But this time, it's just a few months after the elections. Don't you think this time round it's now uh, opportunism at a higher ground? No, it's just that... Uh, Uhuru's style is not Ruto's style. Mm -hmm. Uhuru had a different style. Ruto has a different style. Secondly, the formations were that clear. Mm -hmm. Uhuru had a stable formation in Jubilee. Very stable. <laughs> he had the numbers. Really? And he could face Raila who had numbers. And but uh, Ruto didn't start off with those kind of numbers that Uhuru had. So, even after winning, mm -hmm. he's still not so sure mm -hmm. he's in control and has of the, the numbers and therefore must go out of his way to solidify his <laughs> power. At a region whereby he's trying to solidify his power is Mount Kenya through uh, his deputy regarding Gashagwa. This is the region whereby he has uh, dangled a lot of development carrots, uh, some which have been looked as of ambitious and so forth and so on. Who was the son of the soil? In as much as he did quite much for central Kenya, would you say, now Ruto was even more just beyond any promises, they were there in numbers. Mega roads to be done in the area, welfare uplifting for many from central Kenya. Would you say he's punching above his weight in comes now to the promise for people in Mount Kenya? In terms of development, is it possible <laughs> that Ruto could outdo Uhuru? Now that's my question. It's not possible. I mean, unless you must give him time. <laughs> but uh, Uhuru's... Huru's uh, record is there for all to see. What he's done for the people of Mount Kenya is, is there. It's not a story, it's not something mm -hmm. you want to imagine. Uh, Mount Road is there, 500 kilometers naked way yeah. from here next to Nairobi, all the way to Mount Kenya, Uko, to the areas. areas. Mm -hmm. What he has done in the coffee sector, anybody in, the, in that sector will tell you the tea sector, the milk sector. Mm -hmm. I mean, hospitals. He's done infrastructure. But he did uh, it. I don't think Ruto has had the time to be judged in that direction. But if you look back and, and take history as your teacher in here, yes. Uhuru did it, but he was ditched the last minute by, by, by his fellow uh, clansmen from, yes. from Mount Kenya. So if Ruto even doesn't deliver on the promises to Mount Kenya, don't you think he'll still run away with this? Because even the sun ditched it. I did them, did them good, but they never appreciated back. You know, politics is a difficult <laughs> game to understand. Sometimes you do so well, <laughs> and you think you automatically you are elected to re-elect you as an MP. <laughs> then they go and pick some idiot from somewhere. And they, <laughs> they put him there. You keep where you are. Like, what? Yeah, that's how politics works. Even throughout history, <laughs> very hardworking, forward-looking. <laughs> People-loving, people-centered leaders have lost the throne to people who are just conmen, opportunists. That's how politics works. Uh, human beings tend to go for people who 
reach the heart. So demagogues and other people who know how to reach the heart Psycho touch you in the heart. But you see, sometimes mm -hmm. when you are doing good things, people may not be happy, may not even see them. So uh, you, you can't you can't blame Uhuru. Mm -hmm. You can't blame Ruto for his style. Uh, maybe he has realized Uhuru did so much. Look at what they did to him. I don't want to go the same direction. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do tangible things. Let me just talk nice to them. And that's And it. do small things to church leaders, pastors, Kagari Moja, Apa, Sadaka Takatifu. <laughs> yeah, you know, people, you know, I've seen even in my place where I come from. Uh -huh. I, saw, I saw when I was growing up. There were MPs or people who wanted to be MP, who are really development conscious, who had ideas, who could talk even in the parliament. But some guys would just come, oh, Arambe Kidoga, up 500, those days 500, 1,000. You see, this is, this is a cloud. And people are following him. Every, you know, so those things happen mm -hmm. in politics. Talking about Uhuru and Ruto. You saw how popular uh -huh. Trump was in America. He was. Guys were wondering, what, what is all this? See, this guy is a racist, but he's popular. Because he's touching people somewhere. <laughs> so it, uh, those things happen. You call it dynamics of Kenyan politics? Yes, of politics generally. In general? Yes. Still talking matters, uh, the former president, Uru Kenyatta, and his effect this far on the political landscape. He said that he's going to step down and resign from Azmio to spearhead regional peace efforts therein. But many are reading really much into it than just that uh, perhaps uh, justification. Would you say that his silence, once he steps down, will be too loud for Ruto and perhaps impact him positively in terms of getting his grip on Mount Kenya, where it could actually work the orthodox way. And Uru's silence actually affect Ruto in a big way. It's, any of those things is possible. <laughs> I, I, my understanding of Uhuru leading as Mio was not because he wanted to be part of political leadership after this election. Succession. The way people are looking at it. <laughs> it was, what guarantee were you giving the people of Mount Kenya that their interests are taken care of? <laughs> so Uhuru's presence in Azimio was one way of assuring the people of Mount Kenya <laughs> that we are part of this government. And uh, after the elections, whether Raila had won or not, I don't think Uhuru was going to continue being chairman of Azimio. I no. see. It doesn't make sense. He's a retired president. He doesn't need it. No, he doesn't need it. I see. Yeah. We've seen recently, and it's so sad, that the, uh, the daughter to the letter, uh, trade unionist and pan-Africanist Tom Boyer, passed on. And this was the person who was closely to inherit uh, Jaramogi Odinga's uh, effect and impact in Luanyaza politics. Both passed on. Raila is now there, taking grip of Nyanza politics therein. But now with this mass exodus from his camp, many decamping him, even local leaders. And now Huru goes into retirement and gets into pin drop silence. For Raila Odinga, would you say there's so much, uh, there's an ounce of hope left for him? Does he have the wiggle room to actually consolidate his soldiers back? and perhaps a launch another bid. Raila is a man always reinventing himself. <laughs> and truth be told, many of these people you see here were made by Raila, including William Ruto. He cannot argue about that. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> all of them were Raila's invention and making. <laughs> many people in the political landscape, even Uhuru Kenyatta, <laughs> he was not much until his dalliance with Raila Odinga during the ODM, uh, the Orange Movement kind of referendum thing, <laughs> it, it gave him a national st stature. For that, he had been a Kikuyu leader. Uh, so, <laughs> many people have always written off Raila when something happens. <laughs> when can Balala leave, can Angilu, or you think Raila is off, but he's always soldiering on. I do not think. Any of these things happening could uh, affect Raila. I see. The only thing that can affect Raila is that he's a mortal human being. And that's it. There is just so much you can do as the years advance. <laughs> and you are mortal. <laughs> but not because of somebody has left Raila. That's a small matter to Raila. In fact, I've warned. <laughs> you know me, I give advice and warning in it. From without a fear. Uh -huh. From far. Because one of the reasons why I do so, I owe nobody now nothing. Nobody can stand and say, Manora, you owe me this. Uh, Ruta has not given me a job, so I don't know him anything. And I know, I'm not even looking for one. And probably Raila even couldn't yeah, give you one. Maybe he could not have given me. Who knows? Uh -huh. Maybe he would have given me. We are neighbors at home, and we are lawyers. Oh. And lawyers at the same time. 
you see, mm -hmm. when I paraded my lowness to Laila say, telling him, if you want, I would have brought out my lowness because I'm low. He said, then you would have lost it because I'm lower. So, oh! okay, let me remain. So, so you had to shelve it and <laughs> remain a maragoli. <laughs> So what were we saying? I forgot it. <laughs> we were talking about people not writing off Raila. Yeah, you see, people have always said Raila is off. But he proves them wrong. But don't and I've warned something, now I remember what I was saying. I have warned people and I said, especially people like the president, I've warned them, do not rejoice in leaving Raila naked. I use that word to mean, don't take leaders away from Raila and rejoice. It's even to me more dangerous. What? Because if you leave Raila without these leaders, because I've seen like Western province, everybody seems to be darling, dancing up and down <laughs> and running Ruto. towards Ruto. Raila will just make an appeal to the people, and that would be very dangerous. If Raila puts his case to the people directly, it's more dangerous. You can go with your leaders, but he can make his appeal to the people. Directly. You know, he has, this is a man with an organic following. <laughs> it's not easy to work without leaders in this country. Because our tribal is regional, <laughs> it's king big, kingpin best, <laughs> it is tribal, ethnic. Centered. Okay? <laughs> you need to be a Raila Odinga to make a direct appeal to the masses without the leaders. To the people. And being who he is <laughs> with fanatical followers, he can take it as a Samsonian approach. And that's it. He can say, you have ganged up, you leaders. Let me meet you. Let our armies meet. Midway. Let our armies meet. You, your army of leaders and my army of people. Let us meet. The people versus the state. Kita umana. Sama kime umana. Kita umana. <laughs> Talking of this. So I want these people, if I were Ruto, mm -hmm. I would not rejoice in leaving Raila naked. <laughs> because then the only recourse Raila has is to the people. And there's nobody at ease with the people more than Raila. In fact, most of the time, Raila runs away from, from using the people. People have not read that. Even that Jamhuri thing, not, not having that. Parallel, right. yeah. Because it, that was going to be a dangerous move. I'm not even convinced he went because of that meeting. He could see the potential, <laughs> the danger in that thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I told Ruto, don't dare, Raila, when it comes to mass action. Don't leave that man naked. Don't, don't leave him naked. Catastrophic. He'll yourself. come with. He'll come for you. <laughs> on the one side, you and the leaders. On the other side, him and the people. We can always guess who can win. And the revolution and can we be can't televised. Be and we can't be wrong. The people are powerful. Even in the Philippines, they got into a point where the people were the ones separating the armies from fighting each other. The people now can get that bad. Yes. But talking about this very same Raila, yes. we've seen proposals to, for creation of the office of the leader of opposition. But then again, there are people who are attributing Raila's success for accepting the handshake. And probably the creation of this office is trading the same path as the, as the handshake. It's coming close to the president getting into power and bringing you on board through enticement, through a handshake, or now this creation of this particular office. Do you, would you advise uh, actually Raila to... to, to to embrace the creation of this office of the leader of opposition, or it could be also another handshake in the offing that could be cat catastrophic for him, and li like it was. There's nothing mm -hmm. in creating the leader of the official opposition, but you must re-engineer re the, the structure of government. Mm -hmm. You must change the Kenyan constitution in much more or less the same way BBI wanted. Mm -hmm. Once you change the kind of government you have, perhaps you move to parliamentary system, automatically, mm -hmm. There's the leader of the opposition. In the UK, the royal opposition. Mm -hmm. It works in a parliamentary system. This is a presidential system. How can you have... It can't work. Mm -hmm. See, this is a presidential system. Parliament does not have opposition and government. Parliament is just government. And that's it. With the minority and majority. So people don't... Work. Secondly, if you want to do it the way the president seems to want to do, mm -hmm. it is completely unconstitutional but the more important thing is the politics you know the president can get away with it and constitution as unconstitutional as it is as awkward and as clumsy as it is he can get away with it it is clumsy and awkward because it can't sit in the current constitution mm -hmm. 
can't. How? How will it work? It's unconstitutional because you need a referendum mm -hmm. to interfere with the structure of government. The power of the, with parliament and all those kinds. You need a referendum. But you can get away with it. Mm -hmm. Why? As you have rightly put it, it's an enticement. He can entice the opposition. Soon I will not be surprised to see Kalonzo fighting over it with Mother Karua and Raila Odinga. Or Gideon Moy. Cheap. And that is just how useless our politicians are. It will be sad for Kenyans if Raila would fall for such a thing. Because he's the only hope Kenyans have. The but at least this left. country <laughs> has a person who can stand when everybody else has fallen down. So if Raila were to go for such, I would look for him and tell him, Raila, you, this is betrayal of the Kenyan people. And for, of all that you fought for. It is now running And down. of the many people who died in this country. And of the many people who are imprisoned and jailed and maimed. And of the many people who lost their jobs because they were associated, they, 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 they were, they were associated with, the, with the movement which you are heading mm -hmm. and your father. O, a betrayal of the many people who couldn't get promotion where they were working merely because their name started with O. Or because they were associated with the movement. It will be a great disappointment and a, a big betrayal. A grand betrayal, you We say. can have an opposition, but we must do it the, big, the good way. <laughs> Have a relook at our constitution, re engineer the constitution, retool it, go to a referendum, mm -hmm. and change the structure of government. If you want a parliamentary system, <laughs> then you can have opposition. If you want that, we can have a hybrid. It doesn't have to be either UK or America. No, we can look for a hybrid. Not the sort of thing that we were handling in Naivasha in 205, no, in, in, in 2010, no. Something much more serious, well thought out. That is unique to Africa and Kenya. When we are doing that, then you can find out, do we need an opposition? Yes. Mm -hmm. Will it sit there inside? Yes. Is it awkward? No. I see. But not the way it's being presented now. The way it's being presented is cheap. Mm -hmm. It's opportunistic. It is, a, it is a snare. It's a trap. And Kenyan opposition leaders will fall for it. It's a very sad day for the country. Sad indeed. There you have it from Haman Manyora, East Africa's top political analyst and public scholar. Of course, bringing out nuggets of wisdom that would help in matters governance of this country and also help enlighten the electorate that is me and you.